You're listening to Luke's English Podcast. For more information, visit teacherluke.co.uk. Hello, listeners. How are you doing? I hope you're doing fine today. So in this episode, I am talking to Vicky Kelty from vickykelty.com about playing games for learning and teaching English. Vicky is an English teacher from the USA, currently living in Spain, and she absolutely loves games. She loves playing word games, speaking games, card games, board games. She is nuts about games, and she really enjoys using various games in her English lessons. So in this episode, Vicky and I are going to talk about games that you can play that can be a fun way to practice your speaking or practice different bits of grammar or vocabulary. You could consider using these games both for learning and teaching English. And Vicky and I are going to be playing the games during this episode. So you'll hear how they work and you'll be able to play along too. The theme for this episode is celebrities or famous people. So as well as us playing these guessing and describing games, you'll hear plenty of celebrity and movie star rambling and gossip too. So here's a list of the games that we play and mention. So we mention some sort of card games or board games like Uno and Scattergories. Um, then with the games that we play are sort of like the classic word games or guessing games that we've all played many times. So there's 20 questions, password, catchphrase, and taboo. And, you know, you'll you'll learn about the rules of those games and listen to us playing them. And then at the end, we do the lying game, which is why this episode is so long, because at least the last half an hour of the episode is us telling stories to each other and then having to guess if they're true or not. So there's, there's lots of anecdotes and stories in the sort of later part of the episode. If you want to find out more about Vicky, including some of the online courses that she has to offer, just go to vickykelty.com. Okay, so this episode is long, so I don't want to add anything else here, except that I really hope that you enjoy this episode and find it fun. I will talk to you again briefly at the end, but now let's meet Vicky and play some fun games for learning English. I'm now joined by Vicky Kelty. Hello, Vicky. How are you? Good. Happy to be here. Very nice to have you here. And, um, well, I should probably ask you the usual sorts of, um, you know, getting to know you, uh, hello type questions that we normally ask a person when we meet them. Because we haven't actually, we've never met. This is the first time uh, we're speaking. And that's that's sort of thanks to Cara Leopold, who has been on my podcast a few times and who kind of put us in touch with each other. But uh, so, Vicky, anyway, um, let's start with like, where are you from? So where are you from? I am from Nebraska, from the capital, Lincoln. Okay, Lincoln, Nebraska. That's yeah. to, for for non-American people um, <laughs> like me. You, you are not expected to know this place if you're not from the United States. It's totally okay. Well, I know that I know Nebraska definitely, and it's kind of one of those states in America that is. I don't know. It's just like we hear it so many times, but we don't know exactly where it is. And there's like lots of places in America that are like that. I mean, yeah. we, obviously, there's the well-known ones, you know, the main capital cities and stuff like that. But then there are slightly more, for us, slightly more obscure places. So, I mean, where is Nebraska? What's Nebraska like? Well, it is, it's almost smack dab in the center of the States. But it is, I mean, c because the States is so big, it has a lot of that north um, weather in the wintertime. So you get lots of snow. And we have so many farms, lots of corn for people to enjoy. And it, people get really excited because we're next to Colorado. So they think we're going to have like these really cool mountains and stuff that you can go skiing and whatnot, but we don't, we're just flat. So <laughs> sorry. Is it, is it the, is it the Midwest? Yeah. Is that the right? Woo -woo. Yeah. Okay. Cause there's like in, for the States, there's sort of different regions, generally speaking. And so Nebraska is in the Midwest then. Yeah. Yes. The tornado alley goes through Nebraska. So 
That's a fun fact for you. I was about to ask you, actually, is that where all the, the tornadoes are? We do get a lot of them. We're so fortunate. Proper like twisters, like in the film <laughs> yeah. Twister. Yeah. I haven't seen the cows flying, but yeah, we do get some. <laughs> yeah, because in that film, um, who is it? I can't remember the actor. Helen Hunt and, uh, oh, he just passed away recently. Oh, did um, he? Bill, Bill Paxton. Yeah. Bill Paxton. Yeah, not too long ago. He's a sort of a crazy um, tornado hunter. Yeah, they're like addicted. these storm chasers. Yeah, and and he's like addicted. They're both addicted to the adrenaline of like chasing a tornado and yep. and and capturing sort of tornado data. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like they're doing it for for valid reasons, not like some of us who just go chase it because ooh, be cool to see one. And uh, they end up getting sort of caught up in some tornadoes. And I think there's one, isn't there kind of a sexy scene? Or am I imagining that? With I'm a tornado? It, or... <laughs> I'm imagining it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, but there's a scene, no, maybe it's not a sexy scene exactly, but there's a scene where they do get caught up in the eye of a vol- uh, volcano. They get, no, that's, that's the storms. sequel. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> not even caught, a storm. <laughs> <laughs> they get caught up in the eye of a of a tornado and they have a moment i think that's the thing it's a beautiful serene moment where well because they're like a divorced couple so the tornado really really brings them back together sorry for all the spoilers if you haven't seen twister <laughs> should have um, said that before no that's all right i think i think it's been enough time since it was released <laughs> yeah what it was that 90s okay. 90s i think yeah it's like the decade of the special effects m- movies, the movies that were driven by new special effects. Like suddenly we can do, you know, some some guy in some studio was like, we can make tornado effects and they're really good. <laughs> right. Someone write a screenplay now about tornadoes. Yeah, go. <laughs> um, okay. But okay. I've got to ask you then. So have you ever seen one of those big tornadoes? I, I haven't seen one. Um live i go down and shelter myself when the television tells us when we hear the tornado siren i go downstairs to our little in when i'm in nebraska i go to the little laundry room that we have that doesn't have windows doesn't have mirrors um that's the safest place and you know just seek shelter don't chase the tornadoes people i did it once I did it once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with a friend. We we tried, but it was so super scary that I never ever did it again. It was not a smart decision. You you, you went outside, you were like, All right, let's find the tornado, let's see this twister. Yeah, we were in our car trying to like follow the storm. We're like, Oh, I think it's getting um heavier here, the like rain and stuff. So let's continue this way. And it was it I mean, like the wind and the rain, it it's really strong wind and the rain is just like pouring down on you. So it's dangerous. Don't do it. That's my recommendation. Have you actually seen a twister though? No, like I've never seen one except for when they show the the photos or the videos, you know, afterwards. So it is right. kind of disappointing too, but I prefer to be alive. So I'm, you know, yeah. make my peace with yeah. it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's extremely <laughs> dangerous. Not everything. not only there's obviously the chance that you'll be sucked up into the sky and you'll go flying off somewhere. Yeah, it would to 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 the Oz to the land of Oz. <laughs> yeah, if that's where you went, then that'd be cool. That'd be worth it. But you, you, <laughs> since they're quite dangerous, you probably wouldn't end up in Oz. Yeah, you probably wouldn't make it all the way there. It's more likely you're going to get hit by a flying piece of wood. Yeah, or you're going to get sort of generally cow. battered. Or a cow, a flying <laughs> cow, or a flying uh, a, a tractor, or something like that. Well, it's insane how it destroys the the towns. Like it just because we've gone to help after they've um, the they've the tornado <laughs> and the its tornado friends have destroyed towns, <laughs> and so we've gone to help like um, pick up all the debris and stuff, and it just takes everything out, and it's quite it's quite devastating, really. So. Yeah. Don't recommend getting caught in one. The power of nature. 
Yes, absolutely. Okay, so I mean, I said in the uh, when we were talking before I started recording that we shouldn't get caught up in too many tangents, you know, okay. just go straight onto it. But there we go, getting caught up in a <laughs> in a tornado tangent, a tangent of tornadoes or something. Uh, but okay, let's keep our feet firmly on on the ground here. Uh, so you're from Nebraska, but um, you're not in Nebraska now, are you? Where are you now? I am in what I like to call the Nebraska of Spain because I'm in La Mancha, Castilla-La Mancha, that's kind of the center-ish, and it's also really flat (laughs) (laughs) or has a lot of flat areas. I'm in a a pretty flat (laughs) town, so with farms, like, well, less so farms, more um, vineyards and olive trees, but, you know, farming type things around me. Feels like home. The Nebraska of Spain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's great. And and so what do you do? I'm an English teacher here. Okay. Yeah, I teach online. Online. Hmm. So, Vicky, hmm. I understand. <laughs> Vicky, sounds so serious now. <laughs> yes. Vicky, let's get serious. So I understand <laughs> that as an English teacher, you do uh, like to use games in your English lessons. Is that right? Yes, you understand correctly. I am a huge fan, I guess I would say, of games. Perhaps obsessed would be an appropriate term. I just really love games. So if there's an opportunity to use them in my classes somehow, I am all for that. When I did classes in person, I also did like actually played different board games But then when I went fully online last year, I said, okay, there has to be a way that I can still play these games in an online format. And I will find that way. (laughs) How did you get so into games then? I mean, is this before you were uh, an English teacher? Were you always kind of crazy about games or is this just a sort of English teacher thing? (laughs) No, I think I would have to either blame or thank my family for that because we played games all the time growing up. We actually have um, an Uno championship, the Kelty family (laughs) Uno championship that we do whenever my dad's family gets together. The winner receives an Uno baseball cap that goes, (laughs) yes, and um, also has to buy Krispy Kreme donuts. (laughs) the winner has to buy the donuts well yeah (laughs) for everyone else yeah (laughs) why not okay how how many people are in your family then like my i have my my parents and my sister or my dad's family because he has like five brothers and sisters so it's like a group of six so it's i mean how many people actually take part in the uno championship it depends because um some people choose not to participate And um, there's good reason for that, because since it is quite serious, there is a baseball cap on the line. Um, (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) we we um, have some people that that um, just like to sit back and do other activities while we have our very competitive Uno game and we have Kelty family rules. So it was strange coming to Spain and they have totally different rules that they play with for Uno. I'm like, you can't do that. And yeah, which has come up in classes. I was playing Scategories the other day. I don't know if you've ever played Scategories. Uh, Scategories, Scategories. You have like these categories. Um, I mean, if you're doing it yourself, you can make all the categories you want. So you could have five different categories, for example, um, names, countries, clothing, food. And then you have a letter. You just choose a letter, like the letter M. And then everybody has to write down one thing that starts with the letter M for each category. Mm-hmm. And the first person done says that they're done. And then everybody has to stop. The points are based on whether you have the... um different answers than other people or not right 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 so so if everyone's choosing the same things yeah you get same, less points like obvious things you get less points but if yeah. you choose things that p- other people haven't guessed then you get more points yeah. yeah we've got a tv show a bit like that uh called oh, okay. i can't god i can't what's it called 
Uh, oh, damn. I can't remember. Never mind. I'll cut that out. <laughs> Hello. In fact, we have two TV shows in the UK which are similar to this idea. One of them is called Family Fortunes and the other one is called Pointless. You're welcome. Yeah, sc- sorry, categories. Yes. Yeah. So So the problem was that the well, problem. That's quite quite a big term for it. The thing that came up was that the students played differently categories here in Spain than the version of the game that I knew. And they also had a different name for it. They called it like chocolate, which was fine. I mean, I love chocolate, so that's fine. But um, the, so I was like, well, because my answer for one of them was Liam. I always play the games with people, by the way. Um, My answer for in was Liam Neeson. And I said, it's valid because in the official game, you can do a last name for an actor and it also counts and they said right. no his first name doesn't start with n and i'm like oh, spanish rules and then you said i'm the teacher i decide get out get out well i didn't no, say mate, get mate. out but i did say i'm the teacher <laughs> and we're playing with the u.s rules <laughs> or you said I, I know who you are i know where you i know where you are you're one where of you my live. students <laughs> i know where you live i've got your address i've got your email address you're making me sound like a really creepy teacher now <laughs> Well, I was, I was trying to do a Liam Neeson thing, you know. Oh, um, that's true because they said, they go, who is Liam Neeson anyways? And then, of course, because it's online, so they can Google this person. They go, he's really old. I said, there was no age limit on the actors. Yeah. So he's old. So he still counts just because yeah, he's old. still an so actor what? and he's amazing. Yeah. You need to figure out who he is. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's just kind of how the rules of the game can vary based on where you live, um, your family, your teacher. So you get to be mm-hmm. in control of that, which I really like. Who is the current holder of the Uno baseball cap? I think that it's, I think it's one of my aunts in, um, in Florida. Yeah. Oh, wow. So it travels quite far, this cap. Yeah. It's seen all 50 states. <laughs> no, it hasn't. But yeah, <laughs> it's like the sisterhood of the traveling pants, only it's with this baseball cap. If it's everybody's head, it just goes around from place to place. So tell me about using games then. What, what, what are the benefits of using games like this in classes then? Yeah, so I personally like to use them as a learner myself. And I do that because I think that... For me, they're really motivating. So I figured if I find them motivating, well, maybe other people will also find them motivating. And I also like that they can, they being my students, can focus on specific grammar terms and practicing them, but they don't need to have a textbook and they don't need to have um exercises on a paper they're getting to do it actually using the grammar right there live within the game or reviewing vocabulary without a vocab list like the categories was basically a way to review vocabulary yeah definitely because sometimes it can be um it can be quite hard to kind of think up a really perfect scenario in which people have to use the language that you've been teaching them it can be difficult it can be very contri- you know you end up coming up with something very contrived and often people just don't get it you know, they don't realize that the whole situation or exercise you're setting up is for them to use the language but a game is uh, can be much more effective because you know like here are the rules everyone understands it instantly there's an element of competition so just using the language isn't the first thing that people think of they they realize suddenly they have to use the language in order to play the game and that somehow seems to work quite well doesn't it because yeah. um it just forces people to to use the language in a fun kind of situation yeah and it definitely helps in many ways to overcome like that need for for perfectionism or when they have certain blocks with their speaking because you just power through it in order to win that game. So maybe you'll make a mistake with something that you're saying, but you don't care about it as much because you just want to win. 
and we can go back and like review those mistakes later. The point is that you were participating and using the language. And sometimes that's just the main goal. Yes, absolutely. And also the rules of the game will make sure that everyone is involved because sometimes when you don't have that kind of structure in an exercise, if it's just kind of like, just use these words to and personalize them, you know, make these sentences true for you and things like that. Sometimes you'll find that one person dominates the conversation or dominates the exercise and the sh- more shy people or the less less creative people will kind of sit back a little bit and they don't get as much practice but in a game it's kind of like right it's your turn now it's your turn everyone yep. has to have a have a turn yeah because that's the those are the rules of the game yeah, yeah you really get to have more control over certain things yeah definitely all right cool well let's play some games then vicky i think cool. you're going to you're going to introduce some classic games uh, to us and um you're the games master uh, first of all <laughs> i love that you call me that i've never been called a games master before <laughs> my kelsey family will be so proud yeah the games master it's this sort of sounds like a medieval kind of thing <laughs> yeah like you need to have a crown <laughs> Yeah, you've got a throne or a crown or <gasps> oh, maybe... Oh, I would love that. Queen Victoria, the Games Master. Or maybe the Games Master could be a sort of a, 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 a kind of um, a trickster, someone who kind of comes in and... and um... Actually, that would be that would be more accurate. I can see myself with one of those like gesture, jester hat things. Yeah. Yeah. A jester, like coming into the court and sort of r- riddle me this, riddle me that, yep. you know, that kind of like, thing. I want to be the queen, but I'm really the jester. <laughs> <laughs> Different versions of a games. You could have a, a kind of um, a slightly frightening games master. I am the games master, you know, that kind of thing. And then you could have. <laughs> you always go versions. off on this frightening little. <laughs> I think you'll be the frightening games master. I'm going to stick with the jester. (laughs) And the first game that the jester is going to bring up is we're going to just do a real easy one that everybody knows. Well, I say real easy, but I constantly lose this game. So for me, it is not uh, (laughs) that easy. But the game Mm -hmm. is 20 questions. 20 questions. Yes. So is this the first game we're going to play? It is. And okay. um, so 20 questions, you actually could totally play this in a group. If you were passing the questions around to other people, I think that would be mm. the best way to do it as a group. And if you were just doing it like we are with two people, well, then one person asks, asks the questions and the other person guesses. Yes, that's right. When I play this in class, and there's various ways of doing it, uh, but I will often play it in low-level classes because it's quite good for basic bits of grammar and simple mm-hmm. yes or no questions, even just the verb to be, uh, the verb have, um, and using do to conjugate main verbs in question forms. And um, yeah, well, why don't we talk about the rules of the game then so that people actually mm-hmm. know what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, and I'll just add on that that I like to throw this game in every once in a while with my upper level students just to check that their question formats are still up to speed because you'll be surprised sometimes how when we don't practice those things because we think we know them so well that we um that we realize that we have some some gaps there. Mm, absolutely. But, the so the main idea is that you have we're going to use the um the the topic of famous people so mm-hmm. we'll choose one famous person and then the other person needs to ask yes or no questions so we couldn't ask like where do they live because that wouldn't be a yes or no question you could ask do they live in argentina and then that would be fine um, so you ask yes or no questions and you have 20 opportunities to get information about, in this case, a famous person. And then you got to make your guess. Okay. And it has to be 20 questions because not normally when I play it, I don't bother to count. You oh, know, I do. Just, 
<laughs> do. But you already your... know that I'm I'm kind of <laughs> a little crazy about my games. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they've got to be done properly. <laughs> Should be done properly. Okay, so so that's it. Um, one person it, I, uh, thinks of a in this case a famous person. Yeah. It, and they keep that famous person in their head. They don't say who it is. And the others have to take turns to ask yes or no questions hmm. and to narrow da- narrow it down yeah. until they are able to make a guess. Are you able to just guess freely or are you only allowed to guess once? And if you guess it wrong, you're out. Or how does that work? No, I I don't like to like penalize really. So I let people, if they... So two things, like I let them guess if we're doing it with just two people, I let them guess when they want. If we're doing it with a group, I do try to have them do a certain number of questions first because yes. it, that really is the point of the game <laughs> as the teacher that I'm trying to get them to use questions. They are not focused on the teaching aspect and students don't need to be. So um I keep that in my mind and make sure that maybe five or 10 questions have been asked before they have permission to guess who the, who the person is. Yes, 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 yes. And I let them choose their topic usually because maybe they have like a specific topic they want to practice. Yeah. But today you don't get to choose. Today it's famous people. It's famous people. That's going to yep. be the running theme, I think, um, during this, this games session. I like to have themes too, so... And I think that that's good. Like if you were doing multiple games, um, maybe you were doing a whole month related to famous people or something, that'd be perfect because you get to practice all of the grammar, vocabulary, whatever for the whole month then. All right. Well, do you want to go first uh, or shall I go first? Um, shall um, I pick someone or do you have yeah, you someone what, in mind? If you have someone in mind, because since I have the the um terms for all the other parts there this will be the the only one that you actually get to (laughs) play where i'm not the 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 leader of it so um if you have a famous person in mind then you can start and i'll just ask questions i suggest we both do it so i'll think of a person you can ask the questions until you find out who it is and then you can have a go let's do that okay so i'm i'm thinking of a famous person and i okay i've got someone in my head um I guess you can start. Is this person a man? Yes, this person is a man. Does he live in England? No, he doesn't. Is this person alive? Yes, this person is alive, as far as I know. I haven't checked the news today, but um, I'm pretty sure this person is (laughs) still alive. As far as I'm aware, yes. (laughs) And and sometimes that'll come up that you don't know 100% the answer especially with like famous people. Is this person an actor? Yes. Okay. This person, it, this per, this man. Yes, yeah. he is. Sometimes he is I a- say this person and then sometimes I, <laughs> I like to keep you on your toes. Um, yes, he is. He is an actor. Um, would you say this person, um, would you say that he is well known like a really famous actor oh yes i would say he's very well known yeah lots of people know this actor i'd be surprised if there was someone who didn't know this person in fact that's how well known he is okay is he from the states yes he is from the states the united states the united states of america those states yes (laughs) Good. Then I know exactly which ones you're referring to. Yeah. The ones um, that are united yeah. rather than the, all the divided ones that are just loose <laughs> yeah. in the world. Always united. All the states think alike. They're all friends. <laughs> Always agree on everything. Let's see. He's from the States. He's an actor. Okay. Is he over 50? Yes, he is. Oh, mm-hmm. I don't know if that's going to make it easier or harder. I'm not giving anything away. I feel like I could be like throwing in extra little clues and things. <laughs> and I, he feel is like, over 50, I feel like I wouldn't but, mind uh, if you did that. He's over 50, but he's still very active. Still looking good. Okay. Still looking good. He <laughs> looks good for his age. <laughs> Does he... Because l- I think my question before was, is he from the States? Does he live in the States? 
Yes, I think he does. Oh. Yeah, as far as I'm aware, he is based in the United States of America. I've lost. I've completely lost count of how many t- how many questions you've asked. Um, here. eight. Eight. All right. This is what I said that I am. <laughs> I am somebody who needs all twenty questions. Is he married? Uh oh. Uh well, he has been married. <gasps> Um, he has been married several times. Oh. I don't, I am unaware of his uh, marital status at this present moment, but I know he has been married a couple of times. Yeah, yes, fairly fairly high profile marriages in both cases. Is he oh, now? Um, is it Brad Pitt? No, it's not Brad Pitt. Well, thank goodness we don't get eliminated for guessing, as we discussed before. So. Yeah, no, we don't. Do you eliminate people when you play? No, I don't. Because, okay. you know, as you said before, the whole purpose is that, you know, is they, they've got to be involved. Um, I would actually not play it with a 20 question limit because then people don't have to worry about using up their questions. They can just throw in as many questions as they like. And it kind of perhaps means they don't have to think as much. They can just like, bam, 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 think of any question that comes into their head. Oh. and they're f- And they're fine. You see what I mean? Yeah. So you just let them have an unlimited number of questions. Just unlimited questions, because then then they don't have to be strategic about. Oh, I better I better plan carefully. Inst- you know, less stuff to think about is better, and more. Uh, you know, allowing freeing them up to just to ask questions freely, I, I mm. think um, helps a little bit in, in terms of like fluency and stuff. So I, I'm willing to like lift the twenty question limit here in order to allow you to just freely just throw in any question you you want without worrying about using them all up do you think i'm getting stressed <laughs> you may be I'm taking this a little blocked. bit too seriously vicky yeah <laughs> <laughs> I can't, but don't worry about it <laughs> i can't can't think of it not seriously because i want to win if there's no question limit then there's no winning but, just um, chuck in it. Chuck in as many questions as you like. <laughs> just uh, keep just them moving. Throw them out there. Um, yeah. yeah, you would think that that would help me to think of questions faster or better, but um, it does not. So let's see. They are not Brad Pitt. They've been married several times. Mm. Well, you could ask about uh, about the, his appearance. Maybe you could okay. ask about his appearance or probe into the kinds of uh, work that he's are done. Are they um, a slender person? Um, slender. I mean, he's not known for being slender. He's not like skinny and that's his thing. Um, he's not, he's not overweight. Um, I would say he's, he, he generally looks to be in fit, uh, good shape. Um, so no, not slender. He's generally an athletic, um, he's got an athletic appearance. He's athletic in his build. Okay. Um, not muscle bound, he... not muscle bound, but not thin, but he's in good shape. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Does he do um, like some of the like action movies? Yeah, he definitely does action films. Yes. Does he do some of those like, um, I don't know, like the Marvel or Superman, uh, those kind of films? So the superhero kinds of things? No, as far as I'm aware, he has not been in a superhero film. I think he was, there were, there there was a suggestion that he was being considered for the role of Iron Man at one point before Robert Downey Jr. was brought in. Mm -hmm. I think he was, he was considered for that role, but no, ultimately he's never done any superhero films as far as I'm aware. Does he do any movies with cars? You mean like the Fast driving. and Furious yeah, kinds of things? Yeah, I couldn't think of a name. <laughs> <laughs> he is neither fast nor furious, so no, he he hasn't done the Fast and Furious films. But he has, you know, he's he's been involved with cars in films. He did one earlier in his career that definitely involved lots of fast racing. Um, has he ever cars. had like plastic surgery or that? You, mm, if he has had plastic surgery, it's not obvious. Um, I would say he hasn't. In fact, generally, people seem to say that he's aging very well. Um, was he ever married that- to somebody who was born in Hawaii but lives in Australia? Oh, uh, well, I, I Nicole Kidman he was, was he ever married to Nicole yes, Kidman? He was married Why am to I Nicole making Kid- my questions vague? <laughs> You're the one who has to Was he married, married to a humanoid uh, female who um, breathed <laughs> air in the Southern Hemisphere? Um, yes, he was married to Nicole Kidman. I think that we've I know got who it, it now. Is. Yes. It's Tom Cruise. 
It is indeed Tom Cruise. Oh, that was so good. Yeah, I thought I'd pick Tom Cruise because, well, he's a well-known person. And, and when we're playing the game in class, um, it's obviously important to think about uh, all the learners that you've got. And you've got, there's only a certain number of famous people that everyone definitely knows. Yeah. And even someone like Liam Neeson, as you said before, Liam Neeson is a really famous actor, mm -hmm. but for some reason he's not on everyone's radar. Yeah. And so it's frustrating Sorry, if Liam. you play the game and, and the people keep guessing and then you realise that they just don't know the person that yeah, you're yeah. thinking of. Yeah. yeah. Tom Cruise. Shall we have a little Tom Cruise tangent? Um, yeah, sure. Do you want to start it? Uh, yeah. In my classes, I would probably at this point talk a little bit about Tom Cruise unless you've, you know, unless you've already done that, you know, and if you've done your, your, your kind of speaking exercises. Well, yeah. If this was kind of like people. an opening to something like, like this was just like a warmer at the beginning of class and then you could do something related to one of his movies or go into, um, a guessing game of different Tom Cruise movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could probably work on something like a little biography of his. You know, you could do some vocab or grammar yeah, using using that. Lots of lots of possibilities. But Tom Cruise, I mean, um, he's he's. What do you reckon? What do you think about Tom Cruise? For me, he's a bit of a a mystery because there's the thing about tom cruise is that he's amazingly sort of a charismatic film star i really enjoy his films and i understand that if you meet him in real life he's very um he makes you feel really special he's like really Aww. good a really good people person he makes an effort to look you in the eyes when he shakes your hand he remembers your name and he really sort of gives you his undivided attention and he's you know quite a special person but then there's there's a sort of a darker side to Tom Cruise because yeah. you kind of think what's going on really with him and the Scientology thing. Yup, that's right? where my mind went first, and um, the relationship with Katie Holmes and all that drama. Mm. And the moment when he was on Oprah Winfrey and he revealed <laughs> that he was in love with, yeah, he revealed he was in love with Katie Holmes and he jumped up and down on the couch in a really awkward and very embarrassing way. <laughs> it was just like, oh, and then cringe. He said something about having like his poster on, on her wall when she was younger or something. And you were like, mm, that, that's, that's also awkward. Of something's weird it's not not really that there it felt like their relationship was not really that sort of sincere or that i loved him and nicole kim in together when they were um when their relationship was at its high point i guess i thought they were mm. so cute and i thought it'd be forever yeah they were a beautiful couple mm. yeah i just wonder about tom cruise what's really going on and how, what are his what are his connections Tell us everything with the church Tom. Yeah, come on, Tom. Tell us the truth. <laughs> I guess we're never going to know. Tell us the secrets of Scientology. Mm, the secrets of Scientology are not very great, I think. There's got to be a lot, of, a lot of good stuff there. A lot of juicy, ju juicy details. Yeah, juicy, juicy how, gossip at that place. Like one, th one, what, this is the last thing we'll, we'll say, I guess, about Tom Cruise. But uh, apologies for to Tom Cruise fans who, who are like, no, don't say anything bad about him. He is perfect in every way um <laughs> that one thing about scientology when you when you join scientology or as you go through um the process you know of being a scientologist and rising through the ranks of scientology um you have to do these sorts of therapy sessions i don't know if you've seen the documentary um going clear it's on it was on netflix no i haven't seen it oh it's fascinating you have to do these therapy sessions um where you basically tell all of all of your deepest darkest secrets in order to kind of get them off your chest sort of thing i mean that scientology's got a whole language of this kind of thing but essentially it means kind of like freeing yourself of a lot of negative things from your past and stuff but all of those all those um therapy sessions are recorded so they can blackmail you later well arguably allegedly um this is this is what i've heard that um the science the church of scientology kind of suggests to its members you know if you try to leave we remember we have all of this inside information on you 
Mm -hmm. Just one thing to consider. And it does make you wonder if, if actors like John Travolta and Tom Cruise are on, on, on the, on the, their public face is like, yeah, we're enthusiastic, um, uh, proponents of Scientology with a fake smile on their face. Yeah. Whereas inside they're like, Oh God, you know, I can't get out. I can't, yeah. I can't escape. I don't know. Oh, anyway. So sad. Right. Do you want to have a go? Do you, do you want to f- pick a famous person? And I'm going to try and, um, uh, Columbo <laughs> my way to the answer. Okay. Yeah. Go for it. I'm, we'll, we'll see how you. <laughs> We'll see if this see one's how. too 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 tough. <laughs> okay, I I I'm, I have a particular set of skills with this game. By the way, okay, Just good so. because as everybody has heard, I do not, and I'm totally cool with that. I enjoy playing it, even though I know that twenty questions <laughs> is not like is not my uno. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay, I'm ready. Is uh, this person a woman? Okay, so that must mean, I suppose, that this person is a man, although in today's world, mm-hmm. who knows, eh? Um, you could use another one of your questions to find out. Okay, is this person a man then? Yes. <laughs> okay, in the traditional sense. Okay, um, all right. Uh, is he an actor? Yes. Okay, is he American? No. Hmm. Is he English? No. Or British? Is he British? No. Yeah, okay, is he Australian? No. Is he from Earth? <laughs> yes, very much so. Okay, right. Hmm. Is he Irish? No. Oh my God. Is he European? Yes. Okay, is he French? No. Okay, is he Spanish? Is it Antonio, is it Antonio Banderas? <laughs> I knew once you got on the tangent of Spanish, <laughs> you would probably figure it out. And I really hoped, I'm like, I hope that Antonio Banderas is as big an actor as I think he is. <laughs> so you guys, this is how the game is actually supposed to go with that kind of cool flow that Luke has there. <laughs> Not my like five minutes of let me think of my question. I'm, <laughs> I'm very serious. <laughs> you, you were doing the full on sort of Scandinavian crime drama approach. <laughs> Of like lots of careful, lots of, uh, you know, scenes, quiet scenes of people. There would have been like a light in your face as I was ask, interrogating you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I went for more of the Fast and Furious approach. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> well done. What, what's, the, what's the problem? I, I, we're trying to guess someone's name. Okay. The solution, just get into cars and drive really fast until we find <laughs> the answer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And not even seven questions something like that so well done mm, mm, mm. i like doing that game i always like trying to get what What i love doing is you know jumping in with a guest straight away um oh, yeah. I, i'd like to do another one have you got an, i bet you've got another name written down have I you do. If you have you do I okay do. come on we do this one is it a man no nope. right so it's, i guess it's a woman is she american yes is she an actress yes hmm. is she generally speaking young um, no offense to her, but no. Is she like old, sort of, you know, gray hair, no. maybe past the age of retirement? She's not no. over 65. No. Okay. So she's a middle-aged actress. Okay. Um, <laughs> is she, is she in comedies? Sometimes. Hmm. Has she won an Oscar? Mm, no. Hmm. Okay. So, mm-hmm. Oh gosh. Right. So, has she been in TV or has she been in TV? Yes. All right. Is it Jennifer Aniston? Yes! Ah! Oh my gosh, you're so good at this. How did you even get to Jennifer Aniston from that? Did you remember that I said that I love friends? I think so. I think that may have, I may have used that to my advantage. Well done. Well done. Okay. Okay. Let's move on to another game then, Vicky. So that was 20 questions or or kind of... um, Or as Luke plays it, five questions and I solve it. (laughs) Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, okay let's let's have another game let's have another game okay um what's um, your next one password have you played password, password. before luke uh, i don't know I, i'm i'm not sure tell me the rules and okay. I'll, I'll let you know so password is a game where you receive one word clues and you respond with one word guesses until you guess the quote-unquote password that the person is trying to lead you to 
This is good. Does it sound familiar I, to you? I, I've never played it, but I've played sort of similar kinds of things. But um, you know, there's there's the board game Code Names, which you might be aware of. Oh yeah. Similar. I guess you give one word that sort of leads the the, the other players towards um, the 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 card on the on the table that you want hmm. them to pick up or something. But anyway, okay, I like this. It's very simple. So you've got yeah. a password in your in your mind and you give me a one word clue and I have to guess based on that one word clue. And I guess as the game progresses, as you give me more and more one word clues, it helps me narrow down the possibilities. With that, with that extra information, I can kind of like narrow it down until I get the answer. Mm, okay. Yeah, Are we doing hopefully. famous people? Um, we're still with this, the theme of famous people, but it's mm-hmm. not going to be um, like it's not going to be Jennifer Aniston because it can only be one word. So it's not going to be the name of anybody, but it's going to be on that topic of like um, famous people, uh, celebrities, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm ready to go. Okay. I'm going to kind of throw you a curveball, but you'll see how it mm-hmm. relates. Normally, you don't have to say that to the person, but um, Sky. Sky. Okay. Um, uh, hmm. Plane, like plane. Okay. Um, night. Sky and night. Sky and night. Hmm. Star, star Wars. Can I say uh, star then? Star. Yes, that's the answer. Because I was thinking like the movie star or the star of something. So I was trying to lead you to the word star. And I thought that the easiest way to do that would to be talking, would be to talk about a sky at nighttime. Right. Okay. But obviously I meant a different meaning of the word star, but it worked. Yeah. Yeah. But it worked. We got there. Okay. That's great. So you can see how this activity is, um, it's real simple. It's a nice way to either start or end um, a class. It can be a little bit of vocab review and it can be really nice for, it can, it can work for all levels, but beginners especially like it. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I've got, a, I've got a word. I've got a password in my head. Oh, okay. We, yeah. yeah do it. I've just thought of something. Okay. So here we go. Um, okay. Accident. Car. All right. Um, jump. Mm, bungee. Hmm. Um, explosion. Fire. <laughs> okay. All right. You're think. like she's not following. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to think laterally here. Um, effect. Um. Special. Hmm. Um, hold on a minute. I will edit out some of these. Um, uh, I'll probably edit that out because. But that's how the real the game would be played. Uh, lots of thinking and lots of. What you need is dramatic music. Oh, do you want me to do that? Don't talk, don't talk. Maybe I could add some dramatic music on the top. Anyway, so. Uh, 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 oh, Jesus. Why did I choose this word? Okay. Um, I'm going to guess another man. word. Man, man. Oh, um, stunt? Yes, we got it. <laughs> I, I thought of that after, what was the last one that I, whatever the last word I said, I said, oh, if I, if I could change that word, I would change it to stunt. Well, stunt was the right answer. So, so uh, how, how do people actually score points in this game? By winning. Just by getting it. But is it a question of like number of passwords, number of words you have to guess before you get to the right answer? Is that it? If you get it in one then bam, you are the champion. Yeah, if it you takes could, you 10. Yeah. Um, I Honestly, I haven't really done points with it before. We, But if you were going to do points, I like your philosophy of that, of if you were doing like competitively, because like it, imagine you were doing it with a group. So you could do similar to the 20 questions in that each person gets to say the next word. So rather than just playing with, two people then you would have like i would say sky and the other person says plane and then person number two i say the next word to person number two but they have to remember you know what person number three so that everybody gets to play if Mm, that makes sense mm, i think so 
Um, it didn't make sense. I'll be honest, it didn't make sense to me. Like, uh, yeah. You know, when someone says something confusing to you and they say, yeah, does that make sense? And you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah well, you yeah. know, if you say, does that make sense? Then you probably already know that it didn't make sense. So, um, I, <laughs> let's just, let's just. <laughs> let's oh, wait, I love doing that. that. I love doing that. Saying something really confusing to someone. And then at the end, you, you can make it all right. right. If you say, I hope that makes, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like so if you just need to you need to loop the thing round through the hole and then back round the other side and then you've got to get the present perfect continuous <laughs> passive verb form at the same time and as, the as looping <laughs> and the color is purple okay that's very important and you know i hope that i hope that makes sense and everyone's just looking at you like uh no one's gonna say no <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like doing my visa paperwork in Spain. That's what this feels like. Yeah. So yeah, well, the point is that you can totally give points if you want to. And what you mentioned of doing the person who needs the less amount of words in order to get to the password would be um, a really easy way to give points. I guess the, 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 the thing here is it's also it's about word association, which is yeah. pretty, pretty good it, because thinking yeah. like the other person <laughs> because like yeah. when you knew where you wanted to lead me with your words but since i was guessing something that wasn't what you had hoped i would guess then you had to try and lead me back the route that you wanted me to go that is very important in communication skills because when you talk to a person, you need to be thinking about them and you've got to be thinking about, you know, all the, the things they understand. Yeah. And also even body language, like, you know, looking at the person and if, if they, if they've got this expression on their face, uh, then that means that they don't <laughs> understand what you're saying. Whereas if they are nodding confidently, then that means that they do understand. <laughs> and I'm putting that in a basic way. But yeah. no, it's good for it's good for communication skills because you do have to think like the other person uh, when you're when you're communicating with people. That's a very important basic thing to remember. Um, and word association. We remember words because we associate them with other words that we already know. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, this game yeah, is Yeah, like I of, knew you know, that you would probably be able to get to star really quickly by just talking about the sky at night. Yeah, sky, night, star. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Um, okay, so how about another game then? Should we move on to... Cool, yeah. Um, so the next game is Catchphrase. And with catchphrase, you basically, um, we're just going to be playing it with whatever terms I've already chosen. Um, you could do it with like an idiom, for example, or um, whatever you want people to practice, really. And mm -hmm. then the idea is simply that you explain that thing. Okay. If you did it live, you would get to use gestures. But since we're doing it here, <laughs> then we'll just have verbal clues to explain it. But there's as um, it's like the in-between of password and taboo, because taboo, you have words that are prohibited that you can't say. And with password, you're limited to one word. But with catchphrase, you just explain it until the person understands what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. So, for example, if, if you do, it's good for idioms, good for phrasal verbs, good for vocab in general. I, I, I'll be, let's say, thinking of a certain phrase, certain idiom, and then I explain it, and then you have to name the idiom, hmm. right? Yeah, that's it, right, in a nutshell? Yeah. That's not one of the idioms, by the way, but uh, <laughs> still. Okay, so fine. So do you want to go, I guess you've, you've got, have you got an idiom or a catchphrase or something prepared? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Round one. Fight. Okay. Sorry, that's Street Fighter two <laughs> coming in. It works. It works. Yeah. So this is a celebrity who. This is what you would say about a celebrity who has had a maybe sudden or large great success hmm. an overnight success 
No, because I can't use the word to explain it. Ah, right. Yeah, because that would have been too helpful to you. But you, mm. I mean, like you, you've got the right idea. A celebrity who's b- become famous really quickly. Okay, right. They've had a a really. They've been really fortunate. Oh, so luck may be in there. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Oh, oh, okay, uh, uh, okay. And uh, so, would this celebrity kind of say to themselves, "Well, I, I better count my lucky stars." <laughs> no, that would have been a good one, though. <laughs> They've had a, a really good opportunity. Ah. They're suddenly fortunate to to show off their talent. Oh, it's their time to shine, or. Or a moment in the spotlight. Um, they've they've got a a large. It's their big moment. No, oh, you're so close. It's the chance of a lifetime. <laughs> Stick with big. <laughs> It's it, oh, I I know uh, a big break. Yes, you're right. So you yeah. can see how, depending on what you choose, it can be either easy or difficult. Now you can also do this with people's names. Um, so you could do like like we did with twenty questions, but instead of asking questions, you're just describing the person. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've done that before too, where you can say, you know, this person is a man and he is an actor and mm-hmm. he lives in America and he's quite short uh, and um, we we don't know um, what he's really like and um, he allegedly um, is, belongs to a slightly evil religious cult. Oh, um, are we talking about Tom Cruise again? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How did you guess? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's actually the short part that helped me. Yeah, yeah, short actor. That's why. That's why he's in so many movies. It's actually cheaper to film him in films because it uses less film because he's small. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> I think you made like, that we, one we, up. We we we're going to make a new film, but we don't have enough money. Who can we get? Well, Clint Eastwood. No, he's too big. He uses up too much film. <laughs> get Tom Cruise. He's smaller, less film. <laughs> less 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 uh you know uses up less storage on a hard drive but i didn't smaller. realize that he was um so short i think that who is that other actor um is part of that duo the goodwill hunting matt damon yes matt damon i think that he's also rather short and it's i think either, that they just either... like trick us they're i mean Clearly, yeah, with- it's the the magic of the movies. Yeah, I find that really cool that they can make people look short. Either Matt Damon is 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 short, or Ben Affleck is really tall. I'm not sure. Which I think one Ben Affleck is. is probably really tall. So by comparison, Matt Damon is he looks he's short, but he's probably just average height. <laughs> well, height yeah, That's not because the it, because then you know, short is just all relative. <laughs> relative, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, catchphrase. Do we have more? Shall I? Do you want me to do one? <laughs> if you have one, that you <laughs> <laughs> shall I do one? I'm going to do one. It's my show. I'm doing it. Um, but now I'm I'm actually looking through and quickly looking through an idioms dictionary, trying to find something that relates to famous people. Um, mm-hmm. I was going to say I could give you one of mine, but wait. <laughs> no, that wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, okay. finally, I got it on the first guess. I've got one. I've got one. Okay. So um, now you could use this phrase to describe someone who was a big success, but then their success kind of went away very quickly. So they were a huge success and then suddenly they were completely obscure afterwards. And you could use this phrase to describe their success. It was a... <laughs> oh. Am I allowed to do that? Like <laughs> hum out so the like syllables? Or... Oh, <laughs> you actually are not allowed to hum out the syllables. Oh, 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 so that was a good oh, question. <laughs> I didn't say the things that you can't do, but some of the things you can't do are you can't say what letter it starts with, you can't rhyme, you can't say the number of syllables, and you can't say part of the word. Okay. So do, you, do you need me to give you more clues? Yes, please. Okay. So I would say it probably comes from cooking. So there's a moment when you are, let's say, 
frying something, I'm just trying to make sure I don't use any of the words in the expression. Mm -hmm. When you're frying something and suddenly uh, there's there flames arrive in the uh, in the receptacle that you're using to do the cooking. <sighs> oh, flames arrive they're like and fried um, like and not fried. The the flames come and then go quite quickly. And so similarly, you could say that someone's success arrives very quickly and then goes away. Um, I, w I hope you use this in America. Maybe this is just some antiquated English thing. Well, that's why I was hoping with the last one. I'm like, gosh, what if they don't say this? <laughs> but, but then you got it. So obviously it did exist. Um, okay. Fizzle yeah. out. Fizzle out is, is actually really good because that would be oh, what would happen. Fizzle, when you, but okay. F um, <laughs> fizzle out or sizzle out. No, it's not to fizzle out, but it's more sudden than that. So, um, uh, okay. So let's say, um, th so the first word in this phrase okay. um, is what lightning does. Um, A hmm of lightning. A bolt, strike. No, more um, general than that. A bolt or strike of lightning would be when you see the line in the sky. But if you don't see the line in the sky, you just get like lots of light suddenly in the sky. That's called like a, a, a... Not a blast, a burst. Uh, you, nearly. It's the same thing you get on a camera. You turn it on or turn it off. Like a flash? Depending on, flash, right. Okay. Okay, now we're nearly there. So we just need to get the last word. Um, you've got a couple of little words and then a... And then the last word flash is the thing in that the, you would... flash in the pan, flash in the yes. bucket, flash, a flash in the pan, the flash, flash in the pan. In, yeah, totally the pan. don't know that. <laughs> you don't know that? No. Oh, America! <laughs> See, come on. We all learned something today. <laughs> <laughs> so, a, uh, uh, listeners and Vicky, okay, <laughs> a flash in the pan. I was thinking it's someone who has like sudden amount of su sudden success. Mm -hmm. But then the the success just, ultimately amounts out. to nothing. So I mean, so like this, a one hit wonder. Yeah, like a one hit wonder. But okay, this is according to the the Merriam Webster dictionary, which I should say, Vicky is oh. an American dictionary. Wait, they're the ones that have it wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe. All right, shall I use one of the reputable ones, Collins <laughs> Collins Dictionary? Let's see. Well, what Google Collins Dictionary says. just says. A thing or person whose sudden but brief success is not repeated or repeatable. Bingo. That's exactly what I was talking go. about. <laughs> yeah. Thing, they got uh, it right. Thanks. Yeah. Cool. Collinsdictionary.com says uh, a flash in the pan in British English is a project or person, etc., that enjoys only short lived success or notoriety, etc. Um, so let's see some examples. Do we have any examples? No, we don't have any examples. Um, uh, he'd, uh, this is an example. He'd assumed the group would just be another flash in the pan. Mm. I always use the Beatles as an example because I'm a fan. And when the Beatles first arrived, you know, obviously now, like whatever it is, 70 years later, we, we, we understand what a lasting success they are. Yeah. But um, at the beginning of their career, a lot of people thought they would just be a flash in the pan. Yeah. Something, even the Beatles themselves, you know, they were yeah. interviewed, you know, and it's like, you know, what are you going to do when the bubble bursts or how long is this going to last? And they were like, well, you know, it could last, you know, just a couple of years, you know, we don't know. Or forever. Um, and in fact, it lasted forever. Yes. Um, well, we'll see. Maybe in three years, people will be like, the, the who, the what, the beat, the, the what? Um, who. Some people already do that. There was this really funny, I think it was a tweet um, because, oh crap, Paul McCartney, he had done some kind of like duet with... I don't know who the person Kanye. that he did the Kanye duet or with. Kanye Rihanna. Rihanna and Kanye. He actually did a song with the two of them. Maybe it was. Maybe that was the one. And they were like, that was so nice of Kanye and Rihanna to do that song with this, like, unknown. <laughs> this unknown old <laughs> they were man. were like, um, opposite. He's the one who did something with them that we should. He invented know. music. <laughs> The reason that they could actually play those notes is because Paul created those notes like they were infinity stones in the <laughs> Marvel universe. He didn't really, obviously. I'm no, just joking. No, we're just kidding. Um, so that was uh, 20 questions and password and catchphrase. And um, we also wanted to do taboo, did we not? Yes. Or as I say, taboo. <laughs> <laughs> you say taboo and I say taboo. Yeah. 
Taboo or not taboo? Hey, how do you say charades? Charades. Uh, I thought so. Mm, sorry. Um, I got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I have to say that I really, I love um, the different way that things are pronounced. But I'm very unhelpful to students when they're like using a British pronunciation. And I'm like, well, all I can say is that I pronounce it like this. If your pronunci- pronunciation is different, I can't say that it's necessarily wrong, but I can't say that it's Vicky's. Nebraska pronunciation. That's all I can help you with. You can Google and see if in some other country they pronounce it that way. So if someone says, uh, should, should, you know, teacher, do I say charades or charade? Is, is charade, is charades correct? And you say, well, mm, that's either wrong or British. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like those are the only two options. <laughs> so, yeah, so it comes up that I let a lot of pronunciation slide because I'm like, it actually could be valid. It could be zebra, not zebra. I don't know. Mm, you know, Colin will help. ColinsDictionary.com. Other dictionaries are available. <laughs> you uh, sound like you're um, selling them. <laughs> of course. Col- with the new ColinsDictionary.com search, you can find out if that word is British, American, or just wrong. <laughs> ColinsDictionary.com. <laughs> I like to use the Cambridge Dictionary. I, I don't know if it's just Cambridge, yeah. Yeah. but they have, um, and I'm sure a lot of dictionaries do, but they have um, the online one has both. You can play the sound for the, the British one and the US one. Yes. So <laughs> I like to sometimes sneak in, double check. I'm like, actually, that's the British pronunciation. So you're good to go. Um, I'm just looking at the word zebra here on the Cambridge Dictionary dot Cambridge dot org. That's my advertising voice. And yes, we've got the UK. Now, you won't be able to hear this, Vicky, but my listeners will. I'm just going to play the British version. Right. That was a person, a woman going zebra. And then um, the American version. Zebra. There you, <laughs> oh, very there good. you go. So you get um, the two versions british and american pronunciation uh, one of the features you can access at dictionary.cambridge.org nice i always right. think of the british pronunciation sounds i don't know it's just like more more regal better. more it's just just better fine you can use the term better <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry <laughs> i don't mean it i'm, I'm taking is, the piss. um here in spain they often tell me that when i'm speaking english i sound like i'm speaking with a wad of gum in my mouth Charming. That's yeah. nice of them. I think to say it was that. a compliment. Um, yeah. No, it wasn't. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. It's, yeah, people can be mean about pronunciation. Well, I don't. I don't think they actually meant it as mean. I think they just meant we don't understand what you're saying. Mm-hmm. But right. I yeah. said, perfect. Let's have class together. Yeah. Exactly. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand me. Well, well, just come in, sit down. <laughs> I can fix that. So, I'll fix that. Yeah. Um, with taboo, we again we can do like you, like we did with catchphrase that we can basically choose whatever we want to have the person guessing. There's mm-hmm. like so many varieties of taboo, and I today I've chosen um, just some vocabulary words or a person, like a famous person. Okay. But the the rules of the game for those who haven't played taboo is that you have this like keyword that people are that you're trying to get people to guess and then you have a n- number of words that are prohibited that are the taboo words that you can't say in order to describe that keyword. Um okay. I put six words that I couldn't say. I made it quite mm-hmm. challenging actually. Listeners, we hope that's clear. <laughs> 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 yes we'll find it. out <laughs> so so okay you've got your key word that you want them to guess and then there are a few mm-hmm. other words which you can't say yeah right that makes it mm-hmm. that makes it much more difficult yeah and this is from a board game called taboo right and yeah. in that version of the game there's like someone there's a checker who who gets to see the word that you want the other people to, to guess. Yeah, because I think you're, you, you do say. like teams. And so the person on the other team would have that um, 
would have that card or would be able to see what are those words just to make sure you aren't cheating. And if and uh, if I remember correctly, um, if you say one of the prohibit- prohibited words, then there's a little kind of rubber thing. Like a buzzer? It's like a buzzer, but it goes, ha, ha. Like oh. That, like a little... <laughs> I just remember it like, but I, I, I prefer your sound that the yours one made. we had, there was like a little rubber thing and you squeezed it and it goes kind of or something like that. So that was always the, always the f- most fun part of the game is just squeezing that thing over yeah, and over again and, and buzz people. annoying everyone in the family. You're like, oh, sorry. <laughs> just Luke, stop it. <laughs> right. We're not playing this anymore. You know. <laughs> You get kicked out of the room. Yeah. Let's have a fun game. (laughs) (laughs) Gonna strip (laughs) annoying little brother. That was me. Still am, probably. Um, Well, I'm sorry. I'm not saying you are the annoying little brother. I was referring to myself as the annoying little sister. Right. Oh, you you too. You're an annoying little sibling as well. Yeah. Yeah, very much so yeah okay i think that it's kind of the role of a younger sibling i mean are you really being a good younger sibling if you aren't annoying yeah we can't help it how can you not be younger than the other sib the other your brother or sister and not be annoying it's impossible to act more mature than your older sibling of course you're going to be annoying yeah so it's more like it's not that you're annoying as a younger sibling it's Mm -hmm. just that the your older sibling is just not tolerant enough yeah, it is true that it really is their fault. It's entirely their fault for having a, a younger brother or sister in the first place. <laughs> they are to blame. Yeah, just blame the parents. That's probably it. <laughs> it all goes back. <laughs> um, okay, are you ready uh, for the first one? I'm ready, yes. Okay. Um, so you get this thing from a famous person you request it autograph yes yay (laughs) okay what were the tell us what the words you couldn't say what were the taboo words the taboo words were sign like um to sign a piece of paper not like a sign that you see on the street sign name singer actor john hancock and write John Hancock, that's interesting because that's like an American slang word yeah. for a signature. I was like, well, yeah. he, I, not that he probably wouldn't know it, but that I don't imagine you guys say, oh, just put your John Hancock here, like we might say. Yeah, to say if you did, the, just, just put your John Hancock in this, but my name isn't John Hancock. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> my name's Luke Thompson. What do, what do you mean? <laughs> like, are, are, you want me to fake my name? John, I'm not going to fake my name. Not even for you. Not even for this um, letter, recorded delivery of a you know a, a piece of cheese <laughs> that I'm sending package. to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what? I, I, okay. I'm, so I'm John Hancock. Okay. And who are you? I'm <laughs> this, <laughs> this, Yeah. But in the yeah. Anyway, never mind. Sorry, I'm just going off on a on another tangent. But well, that was right. Okay. One. That's that's good. Have you got any more? Have you got any more yeah. taboo ones? Okay. Okay. Right. Um, so this is a woman. She wears extravagant clothes. She is you often blonde. Um, she has a little ditty where she gives a shout out to Nebraska. Woo woo. Um, one of her probably more famous ditties <laughs> would be ditties. Okay, songs. So she can't say songs, <laughs> listeners. She can't say songs. It's Dolly Parton. Um, no, no it's not Dolly Parton. She's younger. Um, mm. Just Dance is another one. Uh, uh, she wore a ham dress once. Uh, oh, a ham dress, a dress made of meat, like meat yeah, made yeah. of ham. It's Lady Gaga. Yes. I should have right. led with the ham dress. Well, I'm not actually sure that it was ham. I know that it was it was meat. But... It was general meat, red meat, I think. Steaks. Yummy. Yeah. A bit of an odd move, but uh, 
Yeah. Uh, okay. So, so what the, were the taboo words there? The prohibited ones were singer. And so I prohibited myself from saying song as well because singer, song, you know. Um, oh, you're being a bit harsh on yourself there. Yeah. It's not the same um, word. If I were my student, I wouldn't have done that. But, <laughs> you know, I like right. to make things extra challenging. Yeah. Um, singer, actress, because she is an actress too. Um, singer, actress, queen, unconventional, um, poker face, and pop. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, the ham dress, the the meat. I mean, you know, there's only one person in the world. Who's <laughs> oh, I should have dressed. said like platforms or because she has those kind of crazy shoes sometimes. Yeah. She used to wear a mask on stage. Do you remember the days when she was behind a mask? No, I don't. Do you remember that? Yeah. In the very early days, she never revealed her face. There are the um, some other mask singers now. Oh, there's even a TV show about mask singers. And and is it Sia? Is that the other one? Yeah, who, I think that, that might be who it is. Yeah, uh, but I remember watching her perform, and it was like, "Who is this Lady Gaga? <laughs> Who's the real? Is she? Does is she friends with Tom Cruise? <laughs> What's going on? Is she a Scientologist also? <laughs> um, well, uh, uh, Vicky, how much time do you have left? Because um, there was one more game, just one more game that I thought we could talk about. Okay. Um, I have yeah. two hours. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, this game can last Don't quite be a long scared, time. People. <laughs> <laughs> this game can last a while, but I don't think it's going to last two hours. We'll, well, we'll just not maybe... with how good you are at guessing things. If you let me do the describing, it'll be really quick. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, we talked about a few games there. We've got 20 questions where people ask you 20 questions to guess the thing you're thinking of. Password which was where a word association game, mm-hmm. you, you got one word in your head and you say individual words and people respond with individual words until you find the right one, mm-hmm. until you narrow it down. Catchphrase was where you have an idiom, probably, in the classroom mm-hmm. or an expression and you explain it and people have to guess what it is. And taboo is similar, except that um, you are certain, num- certain uh, words are taboo they're prohibited and you've got to think your way around them which is could be quite a good way to force people to use uh, a wider range of vocabulary if you kind of like the taboo words could be the, the easy adjectives or easy yeah. words that people always use so that's good training but then that brings us to the last game and this is one of mine and listeners to the podcast will uh, probably be familiar with this because i've played this game many times on the podcast before nice. Um, especially with my friends. And um, I'm not the only one who uses it. Um, There's even a TV show in the UK called uh, Would I Lie to You, which is essentially exactly the same thing. And also variations on this game have been used in classrooms, in in English teaching classrooms for for years. That's when I first learned it. So the game I'm talking about is the lying game. And there's, there's, I mean, it's really a a, a kind of classic format for the um, language classroom or language lesson, which is basically basically sort of saying some things which may or may not be true and other people have got to basically guess if they're true or not which um uh which is great because it 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 allows people to use their imagination they don't have to say things they don't have to use language to talk about um you know the real world they can actually it opens up uh, many different possibilities where you can just imagine things and for me, the, my version of the game, the lying game, I first learnt it just from observing someone in a uh, teaching a class in like 2002, like ages ago. And I kind of used it a lot in my classes when I was teaching in Japan, where people are quite shy mm. um, often. And they, it, it was really difficult to get them to even just tell anecdotes. Um, you know, as a teacher, what you want is you, you want people to expand on the things they say. You want them to give more detail. You want them to speak more. And the tendency over there was a bit like, you know, even just something like, have you ever met a famous person? And if one person in the class had met a famous person, which is quite rare, to be honest, <laughs> uh, it was always quite difficult to get all the details. You wanted more information or even stuff like, what did you do at the weekend? It's like, oh, I just, um, I cleaned my house. It's like, conversation finished. You know, you're always looking for ways to expand. And so a game like this forces people to essentially tell a story without even realizing they're doing it. 
and also encourages the other uh, people to ask questions. And so these questions can be specific ones. So in in, um, 20 questions, we had yes or no questions. In the lying game, they can be um, more specific questions with WH words, you know, um, and that obviously requires um, different types of grammar. And uh, the way I play it, it's always about the past. So it forces people to ask questions in, in the past and people to give their answers in the past and everything's in the past. And there's some narrative tenses involved as well when you tell stories and stuff like that. And it's just lots of fun as well. So the lying game. Do you want me to just give you the basic rules? Yes, please. Okay, so um, the rules are one person says a statement. So uh, often the prompt will be, tell us a thing that you did. I mean, that's as vague as it is, as, as it can be. Tell us about a thing that happened to you and um so the the first person says their thing it's usually just one statement and then um the other participants have to guess if it's true or or a lie and they do that by asking as many um questions they're investigating fully investigating the story with as many questions as possible and i find it works best it's more it's funnier and more enjoyable when the questions become more and more specific and when you always keep in mind that the person might be lying or telling the truth and sort of like mm-hmm. testing constantly testing their story for um for its veracity you know mm-hmm. and and when you get Trying into to, the like, details them in a possible lie yeah exactly like well if (laughs) then why didn't you blah 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 you know and you have to be like colombo where you're kind of like forcing them to forcing the truth to come out yeah um and then um the the person at the end people decide whether they think the person is telling the truth or telling a lie and they justify their opinions and that brings out different language like i you know it's just my intuition or um you know i just don't believe him or you know various other phrases um and uh, then the person reveals if they're telling him the truth or t- telling a lie and hopefully everyone goes oh hopefully <laughs> sometimes people are just like oh, okay whatever <laughs> you know like that's what you don't want as a teacher uh, you want people to be involved and to care about what's being said so hopefully people are like oh when it's finally revealed okay, and then the, co- the points ah yeah, you have to make that exact noise. Oh, uh. <laughs> um, and then the, the points are counted. Uh, if the storyteller... So let's say there are three people playing the game. One person tells a story. Uh, the other, one of the other people thinks it's true. And the other person thinks it's a lie. Okay. The storyteller reveals that it's true. So the person who guessed it was true gets one point. The person who thought it was a lie, who got it wrong, gets zero points. And the person who told the story gets one point for the for for one person's wrong answer. I hope that's clear. So, <laughs> 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 sure. Um, it Doesn't reminds matter, me. Really, it kind of reminds me of the points of Balderdash because it, Balderdash is a similar idea, only it's just with a word that it, you like create a definition, and so you're like, yeah. is the definition the real definition or is an invented definition and based on on that is how the points are are divvied up so yeah exactly so basically every person who gets it wrong the storyteller gets a point yeah and every person who gets it right gets a point Hmm. voila again we're on the um theme of famous people yeah are you going to do the story first Hmm. Yeah, sure. I'll go first. Okay. I, 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 before this podcast, I was thinking, oh, okay. <laughs> all right. I've got, I've got one. Okay. Okay. So, um, the, the thing is the famous person I met as I once met, um, Dave Grohl. <gasps> um, I, I once met Dave Grohl. You know who Dave Grohl is. Yeah. I, I wasn't he, went, he the <gasps> drummer of Nirvana? Exactly. And the then drummer it, of Nirvana. the Foo Fighters. The, and the Foo singer. Fighters. Singer, songwriter from the Foo Fighters, drummer from Nirvana. I met I Dave Grohl. I hope this is true because that would be so cool. Okay. Okay. You may start your questions now. Can I just say, can, can yeah. I ask you, is this true? <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't ask me. You can't ask me that. And also, if, if another thing is that if any of the details I give in my answers, if any of them are, are lies, then the whole thing is a lie. So oh. it's either completely true or... Or it involves uh, lies. Okay, you can't okay. just. Okay. Yeah. So so. Um. Go. Did he mm-hmm. have long hair when you met yes. him? Yes. 
uh, uh, not exactly. His hair was not sort of, he, he wasn't long enough to tie it back. Oh, okay. It was quite long, but not not long Maybe enough like for it to be length, tied back. Or No, that probably would be shorter. S- sort of um, collar length, collar <laughs> length. Was this recent? No, it happened um, in 2002. Lots of things happened in 2002 yeah, I was in this gonna conversation. Say, didn't we talk about 2002 earlier? Hmm. Big year, big year for me. Yeah, apparently. I learned the Lion Game and I met Dave Grohl. <laughs> Interesting that those coincided. Was it the same day that you learned the name <laughs> and met him? No, um, it wasn't actually. Did you go to like a Foo Fighters concert? No, I didn't go to a Foo Fighters concert, which is a great regret of mine. I didn't. Did you have yeah. the opportunity to? Sort of. O- oddly enough, like when I did meet him, um, one of the things he said to me, you know, I said to him, so, hey, what are you doing here? And he's like, oh, we're just doing a show in town. And he said to me casually, oh, you should come. <gasps> and being the idiot that I am, I was like, oh, no, uh, you know, I'm working. Oh, no. You know, I just basically sort of like brushed it off. Oh. Like, oh, he's just being nice. And, oh, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, I should come. Oh, my gosh. Um, this is true. I, I, I'm very angry with you for Yeah, not- I'm angry with me as well. But I, I think that um, if I should have pushed it further and I should have, you know, if I was, the, uh, uh, you know, more of a proactive person, especially at that time, I, sh- I should have gone, oh, yeah, hey, I'd love to come. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, any I chance of uh, maybe a ticket or a backstage pass, Dave? Yeah, you know. yeah. Now, where was this? <clears throat> so this is the weird thing. So this was at a um, Japanese uh, temple on a hillside in a fairly rural part of um, Japan, Kanagawa Prefecture in Japan, about sort of 30 minutes away from Yokohama, maybe about an hour outside Tokyo, on a hillside at a, at a sort of Buddhist temple. I'd been visiting the... I had been... Check out the present, the past perfect business. <laughs> I had been visiting the, um, this temple and I was just wandering around on my way out and I walked past some other like westerners and it's it's not that common to see other westerners you know obviously most people are japanese of Mm. course um and so when you do see other westerners in japan it's often so you often will like especially if you're not in the center of tokyo you might just kind of like even you'll look at them you know and you might even say hello or something. It's possible. Or at least you make eye contact, something like that. So I walked past this group of people who were coming in. And I made, made eye contact with one of them. And my, my, my immediate thought was like, oh, uh, he's familiar. Do I know him? And I kept walking, <laughs> minding my business. And then as I was leaving the temple, I realized, wait a minute. Double take. That was, that was Dave Grohl. Yeah, double. Huh? That was Dave Grohl of uh, Nirvana and the Foo Fighters. And, uh, you know, I'm a fan. I, and I was then like quite a big fan, especially of the Foo Fighters. I used to listen to a lot of their stuff when I was driving around in the car, you know, my parents' car back in the yeah. day. So, um, yeah, I was a big fan. And, yeah, so there you go. I- I'll let you ask more questions. I could just ramble on, but I'll, I'll let you. Hey, if you want to reveal secrets, that's fine with me. Um the, I mean, secrets that are going to help me see if this yeah, is a yeah. lie or not. Obviously, they yeah. not, <laughs> just not, random not, secrets. Not, no, they need to relate not to Dave dark, Paul. deep, dark secrets. <laughs> of, um, yeah. when was it that you came back from Japan? So I came back at the end of two thousand and three. So I, I was there for about two years. And you said this was when in two thousand two? Um, it was. I think it was. I think it was October. I, I think. It would have been about October 2002, maybe September 2002, something like that. So why was Dave Grohl there? So um, so he was there with his band, the Foo Fighters, uh, to perform a concert in Yokohama, which was the sort of nearby, the biggest city nearby, okay. about half an hour away. And so they were in town to do the show, maybe a couple of shows, and um, they were sightseeing and they went to this temple because it was a pretty cool temple. It was um, a place with a, a, a huge uh, statue, a big bronze Buddha, massive bronze Buddha sitting there on the hillside. Um, the Dai, Dai Butsu, I think he's known as. 
And so um, it's quite an interesting attraction. It's an interesting sight to see. And so, you know, I went to see it. And, you know, great minds think alike, Vicky. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dave Grohl decided to do the same thing on that day. And did you get to meet the rest of the band members then? Well, Taylor was there too, the drummer. But I was, (laughs) I probably should have given him more attention on reflection. Taylor? Um, Taylor Hawkins is the drummer from the Foo Fighters, who, you know, these days is another recognisable member of the band, you know. And um, so Taylor was there too, um, but I was just all focused on Dave Grohl. Like, oh my God, I can't believe you're here. Oh, uh, uh, hi, Taylor. Anyway, Dave, you know, um, uh, I didn't really even say hello to Taylor Hawkins. He was oh kind of there God. in the background having a look and, and I was like, uh, <laughs> just just wanted to talk to Dave. Um a bit so, starstruck, yeah. were you? I was a bit starstruck. Yeah, I was. But there were other people. Dave was there. Probably maybe a couple of other members of the band or something. They're, they're not that well known, the other members. And so they didn't have any type of like um, bodyguards or anything? No, no, no. Oh. Not as far as I could tell anyway. No one stepped in. There was <laughs> to no, stop no big, you? <laughs> no big sort of Samoan bodyguards like, Oi, buddy, get out, get back. <laughs> no, um, it, they were just there on their own, as far as I could tell. Did you shake his hand, or um, pat his back, or may have? I may have shaken his hand. I took a photo. Oh, <gasps> you have photographic proof. Yeah, but it's not. I'm not in the photo. What? Uh, I, yeah, I was like, hey, can I have a photo of uh, with <laughs> of you? you? I was just like, can I have a photo of you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh my gosh. I don't know. Seriously, if this is true, this is the saddest encounter with a famous person. <laughs> it, hey, it wasn't that sad actually. It was. It was. Um, it's it was still very cool. memorable. It's still very. Memorable. He was. He was really nice. So I, I after I'd realised it was Dave Grohl, I I kind of turned. I thought first of all, I thought, nah, I'll leave him alone. He's probably on holiday. Nah, don't want to bother him. I'll be cool and leave him alone. And then you. And then. Up. Um, and then as I was, I kept walking and then I just, in my mind, I was like, but how can I tell my friends back home that I saw Dave Grohl, made eye contact with him and just kept walking at a Japanese temple yeah. in Japan with a big bronze Buddha in the background? How could I ever go? How can I, how can I tell my grandchildren? Yeah. Hey, da- you know, granddad, have you ever met any famous people? Well, yes. How about famous musicians like maybe uh, iconic uh, drummers from the grunge era? Did you ever meet any of them? Like, uh, well, no, I didn't. You know, oh, well, I will just leave you to sit in your chair and be sad, granddad. We're going to go outside and play and listen to Nirvana, you know. So, no, I thought I can't. That flashed through my mind. And I thought I can't. I can't. I cannot let that happen. I must meet Grohl. But um, I and... mustn't go to his concert or <laughs> take a picture with him. That's right. <laughs> so there I are limits. Back. Yeah. Let's not, go, let's not get carried away. You know, I'll do the bare minimum for the anecdote. And it, why? Um, <laughs> but like why? Tell me again what you guys talked about. So I went up to him. I found him in the gift shop. For some reason, they were checking out the gift shop before they actually went into the place. But maybe there's uh. someone else was buying tickets for them. I don't know. They were just moseying around the gift shop. And and I kind of went up to Dave and I was like, uh, excuse me, uh, are you Dave Grohl? And he was like, <laughs> you know, you uh, asked him. excuse me, are you, uh, the da- are you Dave Grohl, formerly of Nirvana and currently oh, of the Foo Grohl. Fighters? Are you Mr. Dave Grohl um, from the uh, from the Seattle area of the United States? All, all yeah, and of then the you United rattle States. off all his details. <laughs> Born in Wikipedia. blah, blah, blah on such and such day to so and so. I basically kind of says, um, I think I didn't say, are you Dave Grohl? I think I was like, uh, excuse me, can I, can, do you mind if I have a photograph? Sorry to bother you. It was probably mm, something like that. Okay. I, n- I never quite know how to, how to <laughs> approach awkward, famous people. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like really cool and really friendly. I mean, not too friendly. He wasn't like, yes, we will be friends forever. Another person. Help me get away from Taylor. He's really sticky. Please. I want to be friends with you. No, he wasn't too friendly. Um, but like you where do you about live? I want to go and see your house. Show me your room. Like he Tom wasn't that friendly. friendly. Sorry. Sorry. Like Tom Cruise friendly. No, he wouldn't stare into my soul. And Luke, <laughs> I will remember your name forever. You know, he, it wasn't that. 
um, he was just like really cool. And he was like, hey, sure. And so I was like, oh, okay, wow, cool. And then as I was getting my camera out, so this is, you know, as we've said, 2002. Yeah. Um, and I had a, a, a camera phone right one of the uh, the first ever camera phone oh. i ever had and the i uh, you know for some reason in japan they all had camera phones before we did back home so i had a camera phone out and i think he was quite impressed by it it was a little flip flipped open camera phone thing and i was like oh, i'm going to use this and he was like oh wow is that a camera phone and i was like yeah it's cool isn't it everyone's got them here and um we chatted about my camera phone for a bit I was like, yeah, it's, it's yeah, check it out. Yeah, it's a J phone and there's a camera on here. And then I can just like take your photo and I can just email it to my friends immediately. And he was like, wow, awesome. So we bonded over the camera phone and I you, took the photo. I didn't think to like, I still have the photo. I didn't think to like get in the frame and like, ah, selfie, because selfies weren't a thing then. Oh. But, you know, this is bef- but anyway, I still should. And I was on my own. I didn't have anyone to like, excuse me. I could have gone to Taylor. Hey, t- hey, drummer. Can you, uh- <laughs> hey, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, blonde drummer. Who's not Dave Grohl. Can you take the photo? Um, <laughs> hey, random guy standing there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, excuse me. Are you a fan too? Yeah. Can you take a photo of us? You understand, right? <laughs> um, so, um, so that and then i was like what are you doing here i think it was my kind of opening gambit or something like what are you doing this is really weird to see you here what are you doing here and he was like oh yeah we're just doing a show in yokohama you should hey you should come i was like yeah sure okay bye that's kind of what happens so are you ready to guess or do you need even more details i think i think i will make my guess but i think i'm gonna go with what i want rather than what I necessarily think because it just it seems so out of this world that this would have happened but mm. I really want it to be true because it'd be such a cool story so I'm gonna say it's true because I want it to be <laughs> okay well justified yeah well okay drum roll <laughs> Dave, Dr- Dave Grohl drum roll with Taylor Hawkins as well Okay. okay, Taylor. Taylor doesn't even get to do the drum roll for this. Taylor, come on. Okay, you can do the drum roll too, Taylor. Okay, we're all going to do the drum roll. All right. It's true. No! Yep. Ah! Oh and, my gosh. And some of my long-term listeners are going, yeah, we knew it was true, Luke, because you've told that story several times, times before. Yeah. And so now they, they got to hear it again. They were like, say true, say true. <laughs> Feel yeah, the there's people, energy. people around the world going, it's true, Vicky. <laughs> Which is quite a good thing for people to be shouting around the world. It's true. Oops. Slightly more positive than it's a lie. Which would be <laughs> negative energy to spread around the world. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you get uh, one point. Congratulations. I feel like after all of that, shouldn't this person get, I don't know, like 50 points or 100 or something? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all of that, all of that, just yeah, one point. Now, this is the, this is the British um, scoring system. I know in, in America, you like high scoring games, but in England, <laughs> it's like, no, one point. <laughs> <laughs> Gold medal champion forever. Yeah, and in all American sports, the, the scores are always like 379 to 364. Like, wow, how many points? Or, you know, a game of basketball is often about 100 points or something, isn't it? Basketball? Depends how good I they guess. are. I guess, yes, it does. Whereas a game of, it, 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 That's like my a game way of football. Saying, I don't have a clue how many points it would be. <laughs> <laughs> but a game of football. But it sounded or, like I knew. <laughs> It yes, it did. Well, it depends how good they are, you know. And I'm an expert <laughs> in judging the quality of ba- basketball players. Um, but in in football, in soccer, as oh, I was like, you, are we talking in American football or? <laughs> no, I mean football, not football. Football. Um, football. I guess I in don't soccer, have to change my accent. That's just how I naturally say it. It's just how it normally comes out. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, in in soccer. Uh, oh, yeah, it's like zero zero for ninety for um yeah wait eighty nine minutes and then finally one person gets a goal or or not sometimes yeah, it's just zero zero not. at the end like 
fifty thousand people have travelled to the stadium and paid their money. Um, you know, the sponsors have paid all their money to sponsor everything. Uh, the, the the players have been preparing mm-hmm. for it for for months and months, and yeah. it's being live streamed to however many countries. Yeah. And in the end, what was the score? What was the score in the big game? Oh, zero zero, nil nil. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then it was either a good game or not because there it's always like sometimes my husband well he's a real big Real Madrid fan and so he'll be like um Real Madrid won but they didn't play well and so like he's not happy or it's 0-0 <laughs> zero, zero, but they played well so it was still a good game I'm like what I can mm-hmm. never understand Yep right right so Vicky um, before we end this uh, this episode, then, so it's your turn. Okay. So tell us about a thing that happened to you, or a person that you met, or something like that. Okay. So um, once when I was in LA, I bumped into Steven Spielberg. Wow. Steven. So, okay. So did you actually physically bump into him, and yeah. was he injured? <laughs> I hope he wasn't injured. <laughs> but did yeah. you spill coffee on him, or? <laughs> I don't drink coffee. So that would be no. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, sorry. So seriously, in all seriousness, did you actually physically bump into him or just sort of like figuratively sort of come across him? No, I mean, physically. You actually bumped Not like into I, him? Like a um, ram charged at him. But there was physical contact, accidental yeah. physical contact. Like, oh, oops. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, wow. You directed uh, Jaws and other uh, f- uh, successful Hollywood films. <laughs> that shall we remain nameless. <laughs> that I can't remember the e. titles e. of. Um, There's another. E. Let's e. do all the old ones. <laughs> Close Encounters of the Third Kind. I got nothing. With Richard Dreyfus and oh, Aliens. Didn't he do all of the um, Indiana Jones things? He did. That's right. Oh my god! Like, boom! Oh, you mean you? It's oh, you. you. You directed Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, Indiana Jones <laughs> Raiders of the Lost Ark, and the ill-fated Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, which you know wasn't very good. But anyway, the other three were fantastic. Uh, sorry, I mean, okay. So you bumped into Steven Spielberg. Uh, where were you when you bumped into him? Um, uh, I was with some friends. We were. It was some kind of like market type area. I This was when I was in the university. So this would be back in, well, gosh, probably around the same time as your Dave Grohl event um, encounter. Wow. So. Synchronicity. Yeah. Yeah. It might have been the as same I, day. I'm not sure. Maybe maybe one of the one one caused the other to happen somehow like <laughs> my meeting with dave Kroll sent a ripple through the universe and that ripple like made you lose lose your footing and boom, oh and you bumped into <laughs> steven spielberg yeah. and and now however many years later the story the circle has come f- full circle that's what circles do yeah. and you're t- yeah anyway so sorry it was around <laughs> about the same the time story, luke yes you are telling the story i do apologize <laughs> 2002 Ish. But this is just my way that I trick you, maybe. Oh, huh. get you to tell the story. Uh, uh, and and you may have mentioned this detail already, but which mm-hmm. part of the country were you in? I was in, like, I was in LA. Is that what you mean? In LA. In LA. Yeah, Cali? you said that before. California. Okay, California. But I uh, see you uh, trying to trick me. Mm-hmm. Ah, but which which part of LA? Can you can you be more specific? Oh, um, geography, not my my top skill. Um, so I'm just trying to remember it was, um, gosh, Amanda and Patty was who I went with. Um, cause Amanda was from there. And so she invited us to LA. Hmm. I, A lot of extraneous detail listeners. The, <laughs> we, we'd gone like to that Hollywood thing where with the stars, um, is it just that you stepped on his star on, on was it Hollywood Boulevard? Is that what you just... Does that count as bumping into? You no, know, like uh, jostling the human person, the physical human form of Stephen Spielberg. <laughs> you, actually, you actually bumped into him in person. You didn't just step on his name on yeah, the Yeah, it was like ground. this crowd of people. And I, being the distracted person that I am, it was my, it was my first time leaving... Um, Nebraska for like, like not with my parents to travel mm. somewhere. 
and um, by plane. And so we were, I mean, LA is a huge place from for little Lincoln girl. And um, yeah, so we were in this like, m- m- I remember as being like a market type area and I was just like in wonder, like, oh, look at all these people and just bumped into. And my friend was like, hey, that was Steven Spielberg. You just bumped into him. I'm like, did you did you realize that you bumped into him? I mean, was it like bump? Oh, a beard, cap, glasses, Steven Spielberg (laughs) or your 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 friend was the one who, who who brought it to your attention you didn't notice my friend brought it to my attention okay did he do anything did steven spielberg sort of respond in any way no mm. did you manage to steal his wallet at all i tried um mm. but no no <laughs> listeners i did not <laughs> of course not, of course not. <laughs> um hmm. the first time in la i'm not going to be a pickpocket it was more likely that somebody was going to steal my wallet than me uh, yeah steven spielberg maybe <laughs> stole your wallet uh okay and was he with other people well it was a huge crowd so i couldn't say yes or no mm. Yeah, it's hard to tell. I mean, Honestly, people people mm. who saw me probably had no idea if I was with other people or not. It was a really big. It's like if you've ever been to like a street market where yeah. they have all those stalls and and there's always just like so many people. It's just a huge crowd. He wasn't with like Tom Cruise because you know I understand that he's well. Tom is kind of short, so I'm not sure that I. You would have missed him. Yeah. Just. Huh? No, there's no one. Definitely there's no been. one here. Meanwhile, Tom is down at knee height. Like <laughs> me, me, I'm here. <laughs> no, nobody here. No one. No, just Steven Spielberg and no one else. And Tom's like pulling at your your the bottom of your trousers. Oh, yeah, <laughs> not me. Um. Okay. <laughs> um, well, so uh, so many people there, and then this incredibly famous person. Yeah. Were, were people not? gathering around him to ask him for his autograph or anything was there no sense of like people uh, looking at him or going to talk to him no Mm -mm. i mean it was like you said with a bit incognito the baseball cap and yeah but but he's always he always wears a baseball cap and and dark glasses (laughs) and a beard then no baseball cap (laughs) it's like the 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 incognito mode for him would be to take the cap off take the glasses (laughs) off shave off his beard and no one would notice i don't remember him having a beard though Uh, oh you don't remember him having a beard well i only like i only got to see him for a second as he was headed off into the crowd right and and you didn't I understand that you didn't recognize him then. It's only when your friend said, hey, that was Steven Spielberg. That's when you realized. Or did you realize the moment you saw him? The, like, I bumped into him with my back to him. So, like, I didn't realize that I was bumping into him until my mm. my friend, like, grabbed me and said, dude, <laughs> dude, you just bumped into Steven Spielberg. Wait, how do you walk? You, you, do you normally walk backwards or i guess it was your wow. first time in, in la so you were like wow well, here i am in la and it's normal to walk backwards in that. that you've never met me so i will let you in on a secret that sometimes <laughs> i do walk backwards i'm like the tour guide <laughs> but i'm like and on the left we have on the right yeah, yeah. it's quite normal to walk backwards when you are new in town just like looking around at everything in awe like, Wow, here I am in Los Angeles. Oh my gosh, look at the buildings and look mm-hmm. at this market area, this non-specific market area that I'm in. And then, oh, sorry. And then your friend's like, that was Steven Spielberg. He's like, wow, LA, Hollywood. It's exactly as I expected. <laughs> like my dream come true. Except for no autograph, no speaking to them, no shaking their hand, just knowing that mm. my shoulder touched their shoulder. <laughs> No material evidence as well to back up this this truth of this story or not. Huh, I, I, I'm struggling here, to be honest with you. Well, I mean, I wonder what he was doing there. Do, I mean, you got no just sense of what it... Why like the rest of us? Just doing some shopping. Why not? Okay. All right. I don't know. Does he do normal people for stuff? Well, it depends we on what kind of normal people normal stuff people you mean. Stuff? Uh, I, I've, no, no. I don't know. I haven't, you know. You haven't I, met I'm, him. 
I'm not. I'm not the one who's apparently Ask met him. David Grohl, if he would do that. David, Dave Grohl. Does anybody call this him David? Sir David Grohl of <laughs> Sir David? <laughs> of, yeah, of America. Um, <laughs> okay, so I, I think it's time for me to guess. Okay, um, I've got a. I I I I really don't know, but I think <laughs> the fact that other people weren't paying attention to him i mean no it's la and everyone's cool and everything but still uh, i think steven spielberg just casually walking through a market area and without getting any attention um from others and um uh, i i find that hard to believe so i think maybe you did walk backwards and you bumped into a guy who looked like steven spielberg and your friend was like hey was that steven spielberg and you, you, what you've done essentially in this story is you've you've just taken the verb and moved it uh, to the, to the middle of the sentence. So it's that was Steven Spielberg instead <laughs> of was that Steven Spielberg? And then the uh, and, and it was like no, it wasn't. It was just a guy in a baseball cap and a beard and glasses. Um, <laughs> that's I think what may have happened. So I think it's I think it's not true. I think it's a lie. Well, this one is actually a um, hundred percent a trick because it can never be proven whether it was true or not well i trust so you just as you say <laughs> i um bumped into a person who according to my friend looked like steven spielberg but was it him we'll never know <laughs> oh so I we like don't even know <laughs> i count that as a lie because they you it's it, it it's not been proven it was more of just a speculation i think I mean, you know, where do you stand on it then? Do you think that you, do you honestly, do you think you, you bumped into Steven Spielberg or do you think you bumped into someone who could have been Steven no, Spielberg? No, like for me in my heart, I'm like, I totally bumped into Steven Spielberg because that is such a cooler story than being like, you've never met anybody famous in your life. Come on. All right. Well, in, in that case, I mean, if that's, <laughs> you know, if that's your truth, Vicky, then... <laughs> That is my truth, Luke. Um, but I mean, I'm you know I'm trying to work out whether <laughs> you're like, am I going to get the point or not? Yeah, yeah. Will I get the point or not? I said it was a lie, but you believed it's true, and you sincerely believe that it, that I you bumped into Steven him. Spielberg will have to answer this for us. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, if you sincerely believe that it's true, and you went into the story telling a true story, then um, then I guess it's true. Then. Okay. Does that mean that I am the champion? That means you're the champion. You get two points. So does that game. mean by being the champion of this game that like voids out all the other games and I'm the champion of all the games for today? If if that's what you need, <laughs> then yes. Vindicated. That's like when we played football as kids in the playground, that we'd be playing football and one team would probably be beating the other team. And then just before the end of the game, someone would say, okay, last goal wins. Oh, yeah, exactly. That's and, you know, move. that other team would scramble a goal and then, yeah, they'd emerge with the victory, even uh, the victors, even though they yeah. blatantly lost by yeah. a large margin. But the, yeah. the, the whole last goal wins uh, trick, um, you know, they use that to their advantage. So, yeah, I guess this is like last game wins and wins uh, wins everything. So, yeah, you are the champion, Vicky. Congratulations. I just want to thank my mom and dad for teaching me these mad um, gaming skills and my sister for letting me be annoying all those years. I think it really helped. And a shout out to my husband for working so late. <laughs> and not not interrupting you mid-podcast. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay. Well, hey, Vicky, it's been a lot of fun. And um, well, where can people kind of go if they, you've got stuff like you've got online things, you've got a website and things like that. Mm -hmm. Where can people go if they want to sort of like find out more about you and, and um, maybe check out some of your online uh, teaching things? <laughs> sure. <laughs> they can go to vickykelty.com or um, I'm active over on Instagram with different games and stuff that they can check out, which is the same handle, Vicky Kelty. And that's V-I-C-K-I-E K-E-L-T-Y. Okay. Uh, that's Instagram, Vicky Kelty and VickyKelty.com. Okay. Brilliant. Thanks. Lots Thank of you. fun. Congratulations again on winning the game. Thank you. And ha have a lovely afternoon. 
in the Nebraska of Spain and <laughs> enjoy the nice weather. Thank you. You too. Uh, well, not in the Nebraska of Spain, but enjoy the weather no, there. The, 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 the New York of France, a.k.a. Paris. <laughs> <laughs> and it, you couldn't call it the London of? Oh, I was using an American reference. Oh, gotcha. I thought you'd want to go with your home turf, but okay. I could do with the London of Paris. I don't know how the Parisians would feel about that. They'd prefer the New York. Okay, cool. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Let it at, do an interview, get back to us, a little survey, and then... I'll do some research. I'll ask my wife. I'll ask my wife. I think my wife would, would be okay with London. But generally speaking, Parisians, they, they kind of like New York, um, London, yeah, as well. So I think I, they'd be happy with either. Parisian now that you p- say listeners. That, I should probably yep. ask my husband if it's cool that I keep calling La Mancha the Nebraska of Spain. <laughs> 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 they might not think of that as an upgrade. But. Well, it's, any listeners in La Mancha in Spain, um, leave us your comments. How do you feel about La Mancha being referred to as the Nebraska of Spain? And similarly, any Parisian listeners who are listening to this episode and who are still listening after all this time. This is a long episode, <laughs> potentially. Um, let us know. Do, how do you feel about Paris being referred to as the London of France or the New York of France? Not that anyone ever says that. I think that we are the first people ever in history to refer to Paris as the London of France. I mean, and possibly the last. And probably the last. Let's hope so, because it's. I don't think it's really the right uh, way to re- refer to the city of light. <laughs> um, okay, but anyway, Vicky, lovely to talk to you. Have a nice day. Okay, so thanks again to Vicky. I hope you all enjoyed that one. Uh, there were quite a lot of funny moments. Again, check out vickykelty.com to find out more about Vicky's work. And um, consider using some of these games in your speaking practice or in your lessons if you're a teacher. They can be a great way to add some fun and some communicative incentives to your learning or teaching. Um, that's it. There's nothing more for me to add here except... Uh, Uh, to say that I will speak to you again on the podcast soon. But for now, it's time to say goodbye. Bye, 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 bye. Thanks for listening to Luke's English Podcast. For more information, visit teacherluke.co.uk.